Welcome to FootballGamePlan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook, bring you our NFL Week 15 preview between the Seattle Seahawks and the New York Giants. Now let's take a look at some keys to victory for both teams, starting with the Seahawks. One of the staples of the Seahawks ground game is the off-tackle power play. And I'm going to show you how this week versus the New York Giants, the play-action pass off of that same power play could generate a big play, not only deep down the field, but also help move the chains. And I would suggest using this play short yardage and goal line, but it gives you the versatility to use it anywhere on the field. What we have here is a broken eye set, strong right, and the power action is just like this. Everyone's taking that zone step here, and off of play action, it shows the same motion, and it's gonna influence both the backers and the safety. Now, again, off of this play action pass, outside zone, is designed to draw these linebackers up to try to be aggressive versus the run. And that's why this strong safety is important. He's the whole defender trying to get in position to stop the outside zone. Behind him, we have the backside post. Weak side, we have a post as well trying to occupy the safety here. Now, the built-in hot read, Russell Wilson reverses out, face the outside zone. Both guys here are blocking. The quick read is a tight end shooting to the flat. So in short yardage, goal line, this is where you want to go. Now, if he has time, he's setting up right here and is hitting the big play on the back, on the post going this way. So this is how they can have some success this week versus the New York Giants off of that outside zone. That play action is going to be deadly, which is why they have to start the game establishing a run, trying to run that outside zone. So this play right here off of that running play could generate a big play in the passing. I know I said big play a lot, but this is the play action pass that they love to run off of the outside zone. Shows the same movement as the zone play, and that's how they can have some success. This week versus the Seattle Seahawks, the New York Giants will see one or two coverages. They're going to either see cover three or cover four. And I'm going to show you how they can beat cover four and get Victor Cruz the football in a short area so that way he can make one miss and hopefully generate a big play. Quickly, what we're going to do here, you see cover four, everyone is all responsible for a quarters of the field because they trust their linebackers to do a great job in underneath coverage. But I'm going to show you how we can influence those linebackers and create a big play for Victor Cruz. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to bring him in a short motion and once he gets to the outside leg of the tight end, then you want to snap the ball. But everywhere else, what we're going to show you is how they can attack this defense. We're going to send the slot guy going straight across the field, trying to influence this free safety to get take him out. And we're going to have the quick slant on the backside to hopefully influence this corner. So you're taking away the free safety and the corner with these two routes over here. Now what we're doing strong side, we're going to have this tight end shoot straight to that area, trying to put this safety and this corner in the bind. We're bringing Victor Cruz in motion, and at the snap of the ball, he's going to stem up and settle down right here. Why? Because we're swinging the back out in the flat as well. What this swing is going to do, pull this linebacker right here, creating this opportunity for Victor Cruz. Get him the football quickly. He turns around, make one miss, and hopefully can generate a big play. Now, again, cover three or cover four is where the Giants are going to mostly see in a passing game. If they can have some success getting Victor Cruz the football early, short, they can have some success throwing the football this week versus Seattle. Now here are some in-game adjustments that you want to watch for in this ball game. For Seattle, the adjustments they make versus the no huddle and hurry up offense of the New York Giants. I'm pretty sure the Giants will try to combat the pressure of Seattle by going no huddle and hurry up so it'll be interesting to see how well they adjust. And on the offensive side of the football, you want to keep an eye on how they handle the Giants' defensive ends as far as pressure is concerned. Will they use fan protection or will they slide protect to one side or influence block these guys inviting them up the field and having Russell Wilson step up in the pocket or even chipping with a tight end or a running back? But they have to make sure they keep him well protected and it all starts with protecting against those defensive ends. And I'm also interested to see how they attack the Giants slot defenders. That's their outside linebackers, their nickelback, maybe even the dime back if they go four wide. So that's something you want to keep an eye on when the Seahawks have the football. And for the Giants in this ballgame, utilizing Antrell Rose versatility could be huge in this matchup versus the guy in Russell Wilson that can make a lot of plays with his legs in and out of the pocket. And you also want to focus on where they attack in a running game. Do they feel confident enough to run inside against that beef of that Seahawks defense? Or will they try to attack the perimeter on the outside with maybe the outside zone or some quick toss plays to try to attack the perimeter? That's something you want to watch for when the Giants have the football on offense. And also on offense, whether they go with an open formation or condensed sets to try to move the football versus the Seahawks defense. Condensed sets do a great job of creating rub routes and natural pick routes in hopes to try to get a big play in a passing game. Or will they try to spread that defense out and attack the individual matchups? 
Now, here are some coaching points for both teams in this ballgame. For the Seahawks, excelling guard to guard is going to be key. You don't really have to worry about the outside edge rushers of that Giants defensive line, but you have to focus on the interior. You have to be able to run the football. That's why I think the guard play and the center play for Seattle will be important. And on defense, you have to beat the fullback to the point of attack. The Giants run a lot of ISO, a lot of lead with the fullback, and beating him to the spot could help you bottle up the running game. And on defense, utilizing Richard Sherman as the wild card defender could be huge. The Giants have three excellent wide receivers, all with different skill sets. And I think Richard Sherman could do a great job matching up on every last one of them. So try to move him around that defense to find the optimal matchup, depending on the down and distance. And for the Giants in this ballgame, I would go with the spread and sprint approach. Stay in those spread formations, widen out that defense, and play with that no huddle, up tempo style. I think that right there could give the Seahawks problems in matching up on that side of the ball. And on offense and on defense, it's push versus pressure. You don't want to get over aggressive and trying to get pressure on Russell Wilson because he can step up and take off. You want to get pushed and try to collapse that pocket, keep him bottled up within that tackle box. And that's your best bet to try to get him on the ground. And offensive coordinator Kevin Gilbride will have to have the screen game dialed up this week versus Seattle to try to calm the pressure of the Seattle front four. The X Factor for Seattle will be their secondary and how they match up versus the three wide receiver set of the New York Giants with Victor Cruz, Hakeem Nix, and also Ruben Randall. That's a potent three wide receiver attack and that secondary will have to bring their A game once again this week. And the X Factor for the Giants will be Eli Manning. Number one, he has to protect the football. And number two, he has to keep the Giants in good plays. When you recognize something defensively that doesn't chime with what you're about to run on offense, you have to get out of that bad play and check into a good one. I like the Seahawks in this ballgame. The one advantage they have is up front along the line of scrimmage. When you look at that defensive line going against that Giants offensive front, Seahawks have the advantage that I think they should be able to get pressure on Eli Manning in the railing, what they want to do offensively. So I like the Seahawks to go on the road and knock off the Giants. And I also want to give a huge shout out to Seahawks fan forums and Giant fan forums for always showing football game plan support.